Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to extend your network and internet to add security cameras to your attic, shed, barn, garage, or a nearby building without using Wi-Fi or adding new underground network cabling. I've been receiving a lot of questions about setting up security cameras and structures where there's currently no network or internet. The Wi-Fi coverage is too weak in these areas and point-to-point -point devices are expensive and difficult to configure. People have been wanting cameras everywhere, in warehouses, workshops, in barns to watch their animals, but they just don't have the network connectivity out to these locations. For me, I always try to find a wired solution to lower lag and increase dependability when streaming footage at high frame rates. If you already have electricity in the location where you want to install your security cameras and they share the same breaker box or panel at your home or office, you can actually use this existing wiring to transfer the video footage. This means that you can extend your home or office network and internet into another location using these adapters here, piggybacking off the current electrical infrastructure. It's super easy and it costs about $100. There's no configuration. It's plug and play. These are DP-Link AV2000 power line adapters. Let's open the box and see what's inside. I bought this on Amazon and the links for this and all the products shown here today will be in my blog in the description below at newfieboard.com. These can transfer data between each other at 2 gigs per second using the two ports and they consume almost 6 watts of power. They're very simple devices, you don't lose a plug-in and there's two ports on the bottom of each one. The only con I see with these is their operating temperature. 0 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees, that's 32 Fahrenheit to 104. Unless your workshop is heated, then these probably won't be uh, a good option for using in the winter time. In the summertime, you also need to keep an eye on those extreme temperatures. I buried a power line to this outbuilding a couple years ago, and there's some plugs inside that I'll be using to plug in my adapters. It's connected to my breaker box in my house, but I'll be plugging the other adapter into a different circuit. Next, plug the network cable into your modem, router, or switch. I'll be plugging this Ethernet adapter in here into this wall plug. If you have a power bar, plug in the adapter first and then plug the power bar into it. It's a little bit too big and if there's a plug with a grounded wire on it, it's not going to be able to plug in. So you need to make sure that whatever is plugged in above it does not have a ground wire. Now the other end of that network cable can plug into either port on the power line adapter. Now here in my shed, I'll plug the other adapter into an outlet. Then I'll plug in the network cable and then plug in a camera. Since the adapter doesn't supply electricity, I'll have to use a 12 volt power adapter to power the camera. So there you have it, 20 frames per second on a 3 megapixel camera using nothing but the electrical infrastructure between my shed and my house. So let's open up my favorite website and make sure we have internet connectivity out here as well. So let's take this a step farther. Let's say you wanted three cameras in your shed. I have a PoE switch. I'm going to create a little mini network inside of my shed that's fed to my main network in my house. Here's how I have everything plugged in. In my PoE switch, in port one, I have it plugged into the power line adapter. In the other three ports, which are PoE active right now, I have this camera right here and two cameras outside. So there you have it, there's a little bit of lag, it's not too bad. I'm on a wireless connection when I use my Surface, so that might be the issue there. But in any case, where it's only a half a second or so behind, I'm not concerned about it. I am though concerned about the operating temperature. It gets very cold here in the winter and quite warm in the summertime. So if I had to install these in a shed or a garage or a barn, I would definitely have to find another solution unless the building was heated. So there you have it. It's a quick and easy and cheap solution to adding a network connection to a shed, barn, or an outbuilding. If you're interested in finding more information on this product or any of the other products shown here today on my video, check it out in my blog at newfieboard.com, which is in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what else I'm up to, please subscribe to my channel.